Using drag to fill in Google Sheets can help you save time and improve accuracy in your sheets. It can also be a useful tool for students to use. How does it work? Well, you may have seen this little blue dot in the bottom right corner of any selected cell. And when you hover over it, your cursor changes into crosshairs. And when you click and drag, different things will happen depending on what has been entered into the cell or cells that you have selected. So you can drag horizontally and vertically. You cannot drag diagonally. So let's put something in this cell and see what happens. I'm going to put the number one in, and then I'm going to click and drag. And what do you think is going to happen? It just repeats it. The pattern was one item, so it's repeating that pattern for me going down the list. It would also do that uh, horizontally. But if I add a second piece of data and select both, what's it going to do this time? Well, this time it counts by ones. If I need a numbered list, how cool is that? Or it can skip count. Super helpful if students are starting to learn multiples of numbers, learning to count in different ways. I can just put in my numbers. I don't really need the six, so I'm going to just go ahead and take the first two numbers, and I'm going to click and drag, and notice that it counts by twos. It will follow the patterns that you give it. It can do time. Maybe you're trying to create a, a spreadsheet to use for student conferencing, maybe parent-teacher conferencing, maybe you're planning an event and you need it to have times showing in it. So I have this list here and notice because I've formatted it with the colon and the double zeros, it knows it's time. So let's go ahead and highlight both of these and click and drag down. And you'll notice that it fills it in, but it's military time and don't really use that in our work. So you can go up to the format menu, select number, and you could pick this time format, but I don't want seconds showing. So I'm going to come down to custom date and time and scroll a little bit until I find the traditional format that I like, apply it, and now I have all those times listed for me. And I can get rid of the ones that aren't realistic for uh, school just by highlighting the rows and then uh, pressing delete. Or I can completely delete these rows by uh, deleting them. So not just clearing them, but deleting them. Now, it won't just do hour increments because often we don't have hour-long conferences. So let's say you wanted to do a different increment. I'm going to start with... Uh, 8 o'clock, and then I'm going to do an 8.15, so 15-minute increments. And again, it's not formatted the way I want, so I'm going to format it with a custom date and time. Grab that formatting here, apply it, and now when I drag, it's going to put in times at 15-minute increments. Very helpful, very quick. Guess what? It does money as well. Here I've entered a quarter and 50 cents, but they're not formatted for money. So what do I do? Yes, I highlight them. I go to the format money, but this time I just pick number to currency. And now I have those. And what's going to happen? It's going to count by 25, showing how many quarters are in $5. 20 of them. Pretty cool. And it can do other amounts of money, just like it can do other times. So maybe I want to look at thirds, not quite thirds, right? And I'm going to highlight both rows. I'm going to format them to be currency. And then I'm going to drag, and I can see the difference between 33 cents 20 times and 25 cents 20 times. All kinds of things that you can consider with that. It works on months of the year and the days of the week. If I just put the first two months in and drag to 12, it's going to make an entire year. If I keep going, it'll start a second year. Same thing for days of the week. Put the first two in, drag to seven, I have a week. If I keep going, I get more. 
very handy for different things that you might need to do. It also works with formulas. Let's say I want to start adding this up to know how many things are coming in for the bake sale. I can simply highlight the three uh, cells where I want the total. And I'm not very good at doing formulas myself, but fortunately Sheets has these functions built in and I can easily get a sum. So I go ahead and put the sum in there and hit enter and I know that I'm going to get 22 dozen cookies. And if I want to know what else I'm getting, I can simply drag and fill that sum formula down my sheet. And there are all my totals. Quick, easy, and very much challenging to make mistakes when you can do it this way. You're not going to make as many. Now, it doesn't work for everything. It isn't going to put the alphabet in here for you. But what it would do if you did this pattern is just repeat it. Does not do everything, but it does a lot including copying the format that you might want. So if I format this one cell with the type of uh, writing that I want, so you can see I have that in there. Then if I click and drag this, it'll bring that word along, but I don't really want the word, so let's get rid of the word. Let's just put the formatting in there and drag it and drag it. Now when I type in these it takes on that look and feel. And that's all formatted for me in everywhere that those cells are colored in. And finally one bonus tip you don't even have to drag and fill to do this but sometimes I would get lists where students' names were all together. They weren't separated by first name and last name, and I wanted to be able to sort by that. So what you can do is just start typing in your students' names. Google Sheets automatically considers what you're probably doing there. And all you need to do to finish filling in the names is click on yes, that's what I'm doing. And there they are. And the same thing will work for the last names. Just check it and you're good to go. It's a wonderful tool uh, to teach yourself and to teach your students. And there's all kinds of ways that you can use it.